for Christians today. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent, a period where, in preparation for the joy of Easter celebrations, we traditionally engage in self-reflection and often in some form of abstinence or discipline. This can range from giving up chocolate and alcohol to significant periods of fasting, meditation, and prayer. And Ash Wednesday, which begins Lent today, is traditionally one of the most serious days of the Christian year. It is a day when we consider our frailty, our mortality, and the ways that we find to damage ourselves and to damage others. And in a normal year, there would be a service in the chapel. For those who wished, they could receive the sign of the cross on their forehead, marked in ash and oil. And I would recite these words. Remember that you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin, and be faithful to Christ. It sounds harsh, but it is often, counterintuitively, a beautiful moment. Because there is something honest and healing about owning our frailty. Something in the end that we share all with one another. It's about not having to pretend. But marking someone's forehead in oil and ash requires touch. And in this most Lenten year that I can remember, touch is something we have to refrain from, to fast from. And what has this whole year been for many of us but a 12-month season of fasting, fasting from the things that we love, from the presence of some of the people we love, and a constant reminder of our fragility, that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. A reminder that something as insignificant as a small virus can bring so much that we thought unshakable its knees, and can even take people we love from us. The things which Lent and Ash Wednesday are there to remind us of have been inescapable for the last 12 months, a lesson in the dust from which we come and the dust to which we return. But Lent is only a season, and so too this year. It will pass, and it is part of a passage of a much richer ensemble of time, of truth, of hope. We confess our frailty at this time, knowing that it is only part of the story. And knowing it's not the whole story is what allows us to tell the truth of our frailty. Because it isn't the whole story, that truth, while true, can't overwhelm us. It's a truth embedded in so much more. It is embedded, for my tradition, in the love which made the universe. A love which values the dust which we are and will not let our frailty and our folly have the final say. A love that can be cried out to, as in the words of the song, which our choir has recorded for us this night. Quitim et dominum, 
In mandatis eus cupit nimi. Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let thine ears consider well the voice of my complaint. If thou, O oh Lord, wilt be extreme to mark what is done amiss, O oh Lord, who may abide it? For there is mercy with thee. Therefore shalt thou be feared. I look for the Lord, my soul doth wait for him. In his word is my trust. My soul fleeth unto the Lord. Before the morning watch, I say, before the morning watch. Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his sins. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Quit him at Dominum, in mandatis eus cupid Our frailty, as the psalm reminds us, is contained by a greater mercy, which holds the universe and our lives in love. In a moment, there will be another piece of music from our choir, a setting of the traditional canticle, the Nunc Dimittis, which is sung every evensong as a mark of God's faithful presence at all endings and every evening. We hope you enjoy it and find it a source of comfort. But before that, a closing prayer traditional for Ash Wednesday, and then a prayer of blessing. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you this night and always. Amen.